welcome back to the channel from a, a slightly windy man tour. The boys are having a good time. What breed of dog is your dog? Have you ever thought about the different breeds of dog? What does it actually mean? Does it really mean anything other than what the dog looks like? Dog breeds are grouped into seven groups. So there's the toy group, so a chihuahua would be a good example of a toy. There's the gun dogs, which uh, my own breed, the large monster land is a one of. You've got utility, such as a schnauzer, hounds, like a beagle. You've got the working group, such as a boxer dog, or pastoral border collie. Who doesn't know a border collie? And then terriers, so for example, a cairn to talk about dog breeds today on the walk up here we've seen quite a few different dog breeds we've seen cockapoos there's a labrador over there we've seen what have we seen boys uh, sausage dogs um, we've got all sorts of different types of dogs uh, lots of people have been commenting on the boys uh, because they've never seen one of these i'm not sure what they are these are large monster landers if you new to the channel. We're just going out onto Russia Pedge, uh, so you can see over there his mam tour, it's very busy. A lady and a gentleman came up to us when I'd got the dogs in a, a sit and asked to pet the dogs. I explained that they, they were very lively and she clearly misinterpreted that because they'd been so good while they were sat while I was mucking about in my backpack and she was quite surprised when they started fussing round her um, and got quite excited so just to make the point that Munsterlanders are very lively dogs they're not uh, placid dogs you wouldn't I don't know anybody who would describe their Munsterlander as a placid dog when I ask people why they chose their particular dog, they often come out with some combination of the looks of the dog or they friend or, or family member had got one and it was just how they wanted their dog. Often that turns out to be an older dog um, and then they're having problems with the young dog that they've got in front of them. So it's really interesting how dog breeds um, aren't the way that people choose their dogs, that they tend to choose them because they like the look of them. So here we've got um, Simon, I think in full screen of you. So he's a good looking chap, obviously. And it'd be really easy to think if you saw him walking along, sitting when he was told, well, that's an easy dog to handle. I want one of those. And that's not really what the breed is like. Um, obviously, he's well trained, but they're very lively things. When you're thinking about the types of breeds of dogs that you like, think about what they're actually like rather than what they look like. What's their behaviours? What kind of a dog are they rather than what they look like? So Munsterlanders, that's my breed of dog. They're very lively, energetic dogs. Um, they need a good two hours of exercise every day. So all dogs have innate um, drives that tend to be prevalent within that type of breed. So my dogs are gun dogs. Um, if you had a terrier type, you're going to get a different set, uh, set of traits than you would in a, a gun dog or um, a sheep dog for example so you've really got to think about what what group of dog and then what breed of dog what kind of traits are you particularly interested in and managing because we have to manage our dog's behaviors you can't just assume that if you sit and explain something <laughs> verbally to them that they're going to understand because they're not they're not human they don't talk they don't understand our language 
but they have their own innate drives, things that they want to do, uh, things that they, they need to do in order to feel fulfilled and to be content and have a happy life. So my boys have come out today to, to this lovely um, place which is just above Castleton at uh, Mamtor and then I've just come across to Rush Up Edge. Um, so they're having a lovely walk today, uh, they've seen lots of people, um, people have been admiring them, stroking them, uh, there's lots of dogs around, there's some sheep over there actually. Um, so, so there's lots of stimulation, lots of things for them to, to look at over here. And you've really got to think about your type of breed of dog and what are uh, the things that are going to make it happy. Two hours a day minimum for this breed of dog. Uh, again, depending on your other types of dogs, uh, it's going to be a different amount. Um, there aren't many dogs that need more than two hours, um, but for example, uh, Border Collies, they're very popular. People are really surprised about the amount of walking that they really need every day. Um, and most people aren't actually really prepared to do that amount of walking and exercise and get. So with gun dogs, they are um, bred to want to work with us. So they are going to listen to you more than a terrier type. So it's a typical thing that a lot of the breeds that aren't particularly sociable, they get called aloof, uh, which always makes me smile. It just means they're not sociable. <laughs> um, gun dogs, uh, any dog that is bred to work with you tend to be sociable. Um, a lot of the uh, terrier types, they tend to be sociable with people, but more independent. So again, you'll get them described as being independent, which means that they're not that interested in working with you because they're not bred to work with you. Whereas gun dogs, they're bred to work with you. So they're actually waiting for your instructions to tell them what, what they do next. And they've been specifically bred for, for that particular trait. So for example, a, a cane terrier, they're lovely little dogs and they love to be with you. They're very, very sociable, but they're very hard to train because they have such a strong little temperament of independence. They want to do what they want to do, but they've not been bred to work with us. So trainability, that don't mean to say that they're already trained. You've got to put the spade work in, you've got to do the work to train your dog. But it means that they they want, want to work with you. It's just a natural thing. It makes sense to them. Whereas your more independent types of dogs, your terriers, etc., they don't want to work with you because it's inside them, it's innate. They, um, they want to do what they want to do. That's what they've been bred to do. The word terrier comes from the word terra, which means earth. So a terrier is a dog that likes to go to ground, happy to go down a hole following some game. So I love Munsterlanders. I can never get enough of them. I met my first Munsterlander when I was 14 and fell in love with him because his name was Granville, by the way. And he was a dog that the owners reckoned that nobody could tire him out because uh, he was just so energetic and fun loving. And at that time I used to run. <laughs> so, don't run anymore. So I used to take him down in the woods. And we used to run down through the woods together and have a cracking time. And I'd take him home and his owners would be amazed that he actually just laid out and relaxed for a bit. <laughs> Personal space is something that's important to you and you probably don't want a monster lander because they're proper little space invaders. 
they absolutely love to be up close and personal. Um, I always sort of think to myself that if you're going to have a monster like this, you're never going to have sho clean shoes again because they're always round you and treading on your feet. I uh, particularly like patient shoes. And it is a bit stupid to have three monster landers and liking patent shoes because they're constantly dirty and I have to wipe them when I've got in the car because they've always got little dot things all over them because that's what monster landers do. They're all over you. When selecting a dog breed, think about health as well sort of issues that that type of dog might have such as ear infections, anal sac impaction or uh, problems with breathing such as can be found in the brachycephalic types of dogs, the ones with shortened noses. Um, shedding again that's another thing they do shed sort of medium um, but they do shed Again, between my three dogs, they uh, are, are all slightly different. So Simon is the one that sheds the most. Um, so here we go, this is Simon. So he's the one that sheds the most. Uh, Kevin, he doesn't shed very much at all, really. Uh, and then probably Michael is, is in between. Um, but they are very much shedders, so you're going to have to do lots of vacuuming if you've got a monster lander. The amount of grooming that your particular dog that you're interested in getting needs is something that you really need to consider carefully. So a medium length of a coat is going to need a groom once, twice a week depending on um, what activities they do. Here you can see little Kevin, he's having a, a jolly good roll, so clearly he's going to need a groom after that. Um, something like a bearded collie, for example, with a longer coat, is going to need probably a groom every day. Morning. Landers is a recall. If you haven't got or you're not prepared to put in the time to get a recall like that, you probably don't want a monster lander because they literally disappear into the horizon if you're not careful. And you can shout as much as you like, but probably your voice ain't going to carry like a whistle is. If you've got that recall there, get them back, everybody's safe. Example is the sausage dog, the dashund, which actually means badger dog. That's why they're so feisty and determined, because they've been bred to dig, find and kill badgers down holes. Who knew that? This is a typical example of why I don't let my dogs off lead very much around people. So I've just let them off for a little run, because um, there weren't many people around. And two strapping young men were coming towards me. Um, they looked very fit and tall, didn't look concerned, so I let the dogs run on and because they were coming thundering past him, <laughs> one of the young men were really worried about it. I apologised to him, um, the dogs didn't touch him, didn't pay any attention to him to be fair, but just simply the fact that, you know, a couple of large dogs, there were only actually two at that stage going past them. Um, but two large dogs going past them at speed, it worried them. So this is why I often just call them back to me rather than letting them run past people. Uh, they're big dogs, it worries people. You just have to accept it. That's, that's part of life. Um, and I tend to call my dogs back. So Munsterlanders are really trainable around livestock. 
um, and that can go for any pets that you might already have in the house so we've had cats um, sadly they're both not with us now but um, as long as you train them correctly they live happily with other pets in the house uh, they'll get on with rabbits again as long as you train them properly with the rabbits um, you wouldn't want to leave them with the rabbits alone uh, but but you can have them in the same household uh, we've got chickens so my dog's trained around the chickens they're absolutely fine um, and they're trained to be steady to sheep and cattle so there you can see that Michael isn't in the least bit interested in the chickens and the chickens aren't in the least bit interested or intimidated by him and that's because he's been brought up around the chickens and he knows that they're nothing interesting they're part of the family so you'll find that your monster lander doesn't have any concerns about going in mud so even though you think well the dog's got somewhere to go around that a puddle of mud, it'll go around it. No, no, a Munsterlander will go through it uh, and enjoy every split second as it bounds and splatters the mud everywhere, all over himself, all over you, usually, and anybody else that's in the vicinity. It's just one of these strange things that Munsterlanders love to do. Um, Lots of Munsterlanders as well, they, they seem to like to roll in mud. It's not something that I've particularly found with mine. They roll in anything else, particularly stinky things. Fox poo being the utter delight. Um, but yeah, just uh, running through puddles of mud is absolute ecstasy to a Munsterlander. So think about whether you want a calm and placid dog, lively and energetic, friendly or aloof, independent or biddable. You need to think about matching the breed of the dog to your temperament and lifestyle. So you've got a happy combination between you and your new dog.